Hey guys, Doc. Uh, I almost didn't make this video because it's kind of a pain in the butt, to be honest. I got a bunch of footage for the past four days. <laughs> Just stuff we've been doing out here. So we've been doing a ton of reel cutting. I have a bunch of reel mower footage. Uh, the girls come over. Uh, one of the girls has never reel mowed before. I think it's kind of cool to watch someone the first day on their reel mower. So Heidi had never used one before, and I thought it was kind of cool to see how she re really quickly learned and sort of adapted to the real mower, I'll put that up. We are doing some testing on growth regulators. Uh, I don't use growth regulator right now on my lawn. I may at some point, but right now we're doing some testing on the test patch and on the world's worst, we're doing that. We put out PGF complete on the, all those lawns. I gotta put some out on my lawn, so maybe I'll show you a little bit of that. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit about reel mowers. Uh, I had to back lap some. I had to adjust blades. I got video of that. I don't know how I'm going to put that on here, but I'm going to talk about the four laws, I guess we call it. Impossible. It would conflict with the first law. The four rules that I use and I think might help you when picking a reel mower. I can, I can buy any reel mower I want, and, but I think I like to keep the reel mowers kind of simple i don't like to go too extravagant with real mowers and mainly because with all the real mowing i do i can't have one real mower i need to at least have a backup if not two backups based on what we're doing so i'll talk a little bit about real mowers and some of the some of the guidelines i like to use i'll show you the lawns we got done doing the seeding of the green i got to cut the green right after this video if you do not have the Bermuda Lawn Guide, and I say this over and over, the Bermuda Lawn Guide answers so many questions. Someone says, should I put pre-emerge down on new seed, on new sod? What should I, should I put PGF complete down on new sod? Or um, Every single question you could want, you're gonna need the Bermuda Lawn Guide, especially because we're coming into some disease zones and in a month or two, we're gonna be hitting with army worms. Get the Bermuda Lawn Guide, it'll walk you through the whole year. Click subscribe and uh, let's go forward with the video. Okay, so uh, before we get into the real mower stuff real quick, I figured I'd, if you didn't see the reseeding project we did on the green, uh, we decided to um, come over here on the green and do some more dwarf type grass. So we planted two different types of creeping, a bent and a blue. And uh, again, we're just ex having fun experimenting. Watch that video. My son and I did it. It's pretty cool. But here's a little tip if you're seeding. So you can see that I see a lot of green here, but that's the old Bermuda that we just left in place. So I want to know, is my seed germinating? Because it's only been, what, four days? So wherever you do a seeding project, here's what I want you to do. I want you to put a little teeny pile of dirt with some seed mixed into it. And you can go to that pile and you can inspect that pile and see if the, see if the germination process is happening. If the germination process is happening there, then it should be happening everywhere else and it's a good indicator that you may need more water or something else. Good Lord, sounds like Alfred Hitchcock out here. Let me just grab a little bit of this and I'm gonna put it in my hand and show you guys. What I'm, exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm gonna put this in my hand, and what I should see, uh, there we go, right there. You might see a little white fine fiber right there. See those little white fine fibers? Well, that's that dwarf Bermuda grass actually germinating. Not dwarf Bermuda, I'm sorry. That's the small grass germinating. So the little teeny fibers you see there, that's germination of the seed, it's so tiny. So, so that tells me, that's my germination test, and that tells me that, yep, I should have germination all over this. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna let the Bermuda kinda grow up and hold the seed in in case we get any storms. And then we'll come in and basically we'll scalp the Bermuda. By the time we scalp the Bermuda, the other seed will be coming up. So it'll be interesting, fun project. Okay, so this is the mower that I recommend for majority of homeowners, and I link to it in the description below this exact unit. So let me go over my laws, <laughs> the four laws of iRobotic real mowers. Law number one, rule number one, you have to have 25 inch or larger. I don't care what size lawn you have. If you're cutting a putting green, then you can go smaller. But almost all regular lawns, 25 inch or larger. 
law rule number two, I have to be able to easily maintain, maintain it and backlap it myself. I want to be able to backlap my mower about every 30 days. So uh, you cannot wait an entire season to backlap. So you need to be able to backlap it yourself. I can backlap this in about 10 minutes. It's very simple. So I have to be able to maintain it. Law number three is I have to be able to not only slow this down with a varying speed because I want to go around edges and next to my pool but I also want to be able to push it easily so I want to be able to use it like a push mower like if I want to go in between all my rose bushes diagonally I don't want the power wheel engaged I want to be able to push it and just use it like a regular mower so that's rule number three and rule number four rule number four is cost <laughs> um, I just don't see I think you should be around 1800 bucks, maybe a little less for a good real mower. The reason being is if you go out and try and find a nice riding lawn mower like a John Deere, that's about the price point. So you're going to say, am I going to get a deer or am I going to go with something like this? Well, I have a deer. I think 1800 bucks is probably a good price point for a new lawn mower, for a new real mower. I don't see any reason paying $3,000, $4,000, $5,000, $6,000 for a real mower when this thing cuts probably just as good as those upper end units. And besides, I gotta have backups. We're cutting four lawns here. So if this thing goes down for some reason, I need to have a backup. Or I may have to have two people real cutting at the same time. So I mean, <laughs> there, are, there are some mowers, if you follow the rules, uh, uh, Alette is a good example. Beautiful piece of equipment. But if I wanted to go with an Alette that was followed my laws, then I would have to probably spend about $6,000 to get one that was close to a 25 inch um, and I'm just not going to do that. So again, beautiful piece of equipment, not knocking them. I'll let our beautiful lawnmowers. The other thing is, is some of these cartridge systems, they have stuff that you can swap in or out. There's scarifiers, there's dethatchers. I have Bermuda. I don't need to do any of that. Um, in my entire life, I don't think I've ever dethatched a Bermuda lawn. <laughs> There's no reason to dethatch Bermuda, and especially during the growing season. Uh, the way that Bermuda grows with runners going all through it, if you dethatch it, you're going to destroy half your lawn. So you do not dethatch Bermuda grass unless maybe you did a scalp and you see heavy thatch, but I just don't dethatch. So I don't need interchangeable cartridges. I really don't. So those are the four laws I follow. And again, there are some really high-end, nice, nice equipment out there. But I just personally, if you just want a really good piece of equipment that you can work on yourself, uh, I would say my number one pick is McLean and number two is True Cut. The only reason I don't like the True Cuts anymore, and I don't call them number one, is, um, is really the heavy wheel system because, let me show you. So if you look at the back of this unit, when the wheel is down, when the drive wheel is down, I essentially have almost a solid roller all the way across here. So I have all the big wheel here, big wheel here, big wheel here, and I almost have a solid roller all the way behind me. When I get to the true cuts, when I go to the true cuts, I have these big massive wheels, and if you have anything any type of grass over three quarters of an inch they can leave compression marks and trust me i've had people that own them say the same thing the big wheels will leave it's a heavy heavy unit and leave compression marks the other issue that i don't like about the true cuts is the way that the drive system works with your thumb it after you've been using it a long time your thumb and tendons in here will hurt People say, well, you can lock that. I talked to Jacob, who uses the True Cut twice a week out here, and he said, there's no way, and he said, there's no way I could use that thing. You cannot lock the drive system down and just go cut your lawn. There's no way. You have to keep that. You have to use that throttle consistently when you're using the True Cut. Again, I use my 20-inch True Cut on my green back here, and we use the big 27-inch across on those nasty lawns because they're just so nasty. And I don't want to put all that wear and tear on my good and clean. You can get a 25-inch reel mower with a Honda engine, with the upgraded Honda engine, um, with a groove roller, everything included, for about 1,800 bucks plus shipping. So. 
that's that's a good unit, a brand new unit for that. And again, um, you can you can backlap this, you can backlap this yourself. Probably in, the average person can do it in about 20 minutes. You can adjust the blades very easily. Now let me tell you about the special. Now this is June 20th, I think. Uh, I talked to I talked to Mark down there, and he said, "Here's what I want to do for your viewers." If they order one of these things through your link online, if they or place an order online, not pick up a phone and call, if they actually order online, when they check out, they put free grass catcher per dock, he'll give you a free grass catcher, which is like 150 bucks or something like that. So, and that's gonna go through, uh, <laughs> let me see, through September 1st. So if you want a real mower, you go to my website, you click on it, and when you get to the page, you'll say add to cart. You add it to your cart, you do your checkout, and in the memo or the comments, just write free grass catcher per dock. That's the only way. If you pick up a phone and call him, he's not going to give it to you. That's the only way you can get this special. He just wants to keep track of, of the impressions on it. So I said, yeah, sure, well, I'll pass that along. So anyways, it's a good deal. That's pretty much all I use morning <laughs> Man. my nose is all plugged up my eyes are all puffy the morning pollen I gotta say you can't get any better than this this lawn is perfect I don't say that often <laughs> it's perfect now it's got dew it's early morning it's like 7 a.m. the sun's just coming up so everything is covered with dew but it's right about half an inch. Let me see if I can show you. Get beyond my... And people keep asking about pea spots. And yes, I have pea spots. I just stop worrying about them. That's how I handle them. <laughs> Perfect. Real quick, I'm just going to touch on a few subjects real quick before the sun comes up and I can show you some of the other lawns. So the putting green, uh, if you didn't see the putting green video with my son and I out here doing the second seeding, where what we're doing now is we're putting down two dwarf type Bermudas, or not Bermudas, uh, a bent grass and a blue creeping. So I don't know that I have germination yet. What you're seeing here, that green haze is probably the existing Bermuda coming up. And I gotta come out and cut that today. The entire yard, every square inch of this yard is absolutely perfect. All right, let me take you out front. Because once the sun comes up, it doesn't shoot well. It all bleaches out. So I wanted to show you. Someone had asked how the other lawns are doing. So let me explain the experiment we're doing. We have a new PGR growth regulator. Um, I normally don't use any growth regulators on my lawns, but across the street we're having to cut so much I was like this is the right time to do it over here so one thing we did was with barbs and the other lawns we took them down short so they might look a little like scalpy and ugly but they'll come up so that's my front and the front looks perfect absolutely perfect got through it pushed through that brown patch Perfect. So this is across the street. This is the what we call the test patch. Now the test patch was an uncared for piece of property. Okay, so you see all the weeds? See how there's a little bit of Bermuda in here, but it's mostly weeds. That's what this used to look so like. So you can see the difference, and that's what it looks like now. Again, we took this down short, so there's a little bit of scalpy marks. And you can tell that this is much more coarse. This is common. I encourage anybody that really cares about their lawn to wake up early and look at the dew, because the dew will tell you everything. It'll tell you if deer are coming in, it'll tell you insects that are crawling across, it tells you everything. So there's the world's worst. And it's looking pretty good. Man, that lawn is bumpy. So now let me walk up and take the take the take the 
take a look at barbs. I'm gonna show you an example of why you come out and look for footprints. <laughs> see if you can see this. <clears throat> so this is the deer walking up to my garden to eat stuff, bushes. It got sprayed and then ba-doom, 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 he ran off <laughs> by my deer sprayer. So Barb's yard, when we took it over, there really wasn't much Bermuda grass. It was really open clay and a little bit of weeds and a little bit of Bermuda. But you can see it now. Now hers is gonna look pretty yellow because we scalped it, we cut it down really short. And it was perfect timing because right after we cut it and did the application, we put down PGF complete. And about two hours later, we had a nice thunderstorm come by. So believe it or not, normally this is pretty tall. And you can see that we've got it maybe down to an inch. One of the reasons why I wanted to cut her lawn short was because she had uh, leaf suckers. If you're going along, you see these little white things hopping. Those are usually leaf suckers. They don't necessarily hurt a plant too badly, but um, they just, they were annoying and they just suck juice out of the leaves. Wow, it's starting to get hot early out here. <laughs> it really is. So one of the things I wanted to discuss on this video was switching over to a very late afternoon or an early evening cut if you have the time and sunset is coming in the sun is off your lawn you're starting to get shaded it's a good time to cut it really is during the summer if you cut early morning um the sun's going to come up and hit the grass within the next couple hours and sometimes you can get these white tips it'll give you sort of a white haze on the grass if you cut in the middle of the day, you can get a little bit of a burn gloss. And that'll give you an, also a sort of a white haze look. But what I've learned is when you start to get into this July and August type mode, um, you cut more often, but cut like an early evening. Number one, it's much easier on your body. When we're cutting out here during the day, we're just dying. But it's a lot cooler, it's easier on the body, and it's easier on the grass. Um, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you leave the blade tip open for exposure overnight. It, it really doesn't matter, to be honest. Um, we've been doing it for years this way. When it gets really hot, go that late evening, the early evening cut really is good. So anyways, I came out last night and I cut. I'll put that up and then I'll throw up uh, a lot of the girls and Jacob and everyone else cutting everything else we did. So hold on. Driving this like a spiritual cleanse Where every mile is a new beginning And every friend holds a new end Eyes on the road, don't lose control I'm speeding fast to chase my soul I'm driving to get away Running through emotions high and low For the sky, I had it all but lost and fell back down again. Spent my time playing the game where every single day was a losing battle and every drink was a dead end. Eyes on the goal, don't lose control. I'm living fast, I've lost my soul. I'm driving to get away. Emotions high and low Holding on or letting go I'm fighting Another day
All right, so I got a uh, I got the beauty out, the John Deere's out. I actually had this serviced over at the winter through John Deere dealer. They came, they picked it up, um, they serviced it, and they returned it, which is a really nice deal, by the way. So you don't have to do anything, and then I just washed it and waxed it. I got some crap on it. And that's how I store my deer. That's why it's this thing's what three years old now, and it looks like showroom condition. Wash and wax, baby. So I've got the bagger unit on it, and here's what we're doing: we're taking uh, we're taking barbs and the other two lawns down short for the first time. And the one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to burden him with a catcher on that. Uh, 27 inch you'd, you'd have to empty that catcher every single pass every single pass every single pass it's a pain in the ass the girls hate it when we use the catchers but this thing this thing will just about pick up all those clippings what's happening is is when you take it down all that dead bermuda we're, we're going to cut it hard because we're doing some special treatments um and that dead that those extra clippings will turn brown and it looks ugly so i'm just going to ride over it with the deer and just pick it up with the deer so So here is the growth regulator that we're testing. We'll be putting this on a few different areas and we're going to be fertilizing at the same time. Hmm, interesting. Wow. It is bright out here. Okay, so now we're about Oh, maybe 1 2 o'clock, and it is smoking hot. The sun is scorching. <laughs> you do not want to be cutting grass right now. That's why I said if you can switch over to that early evening cut, man, it's a great time to cut. I mean, it's just burning my skin. I and mean, the first thing I do in the morning is put sun, 100 proof, 100 SPF on, get out my stupid hat. Whew. Anyways, so let me explain what we're doing with this testing. Um, we're actually working with a manufacturer on this to, they wanted me to sort of play with this a little bit because what I wanted to do was barbs, I'm not putting any growth regulator on, 
test patch, we put PGF complete one coat of growth regulator. Um, the world's worst PGF complete because it needed it. And then we did two light coats of growth regulator. Then I have a strip on my lawn, no fertilizer, and three coats of the growth regulator just as a test, just to see what's going to happen to this thing. Various different modes, modes of with fertilizer, without fertilizer, hot, <laughs> some with irrigation, some without irrigation. Now this area never used to have good Bermuda, uh, but because we're putting a lot of human char out here this year, man, and we're getting decent rain, this, this area looks phenomenal. So you can see there's like three red bushes there. That third bush right here is where I lined up the spreader and I went one, two, and three coats right there. So we'll see what happens. And then right after that, I watered it and we got a rain. So we're gonna see what happens. See if there's any negative impacts and watch what happens on the growth. Growth regulators are weird. It's kind of a, it's a very com it's very complicated what happens when you put a growth regulator down. The, the, what it does with the hormones, it actually doesn't stop photosynthesis. It just changes the way, <laughs> it's just really crazy what happens. Um, but it, growth regulators should really only be used by people that are real happy with their lawns. I'm real happy with it, and I just want to sort of just not cut as much. So again, once we finish our testing on it, we'll make sure we get you a link to it. If it all works out well, that's about it. So. Okay, so this is a lawn that was cut last early evening. And you can see I really don't have any negative. I don't have a lot of white hazing on it. I have some gentle stripes, but man, it just looks beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Cutting in about half an inch. So, anyways, that's just about a full day of real mowing there. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Click subscribe. Don't forget the Bermuda Lawn Guide, and uh, talk to you later. Dot.